the Miami defense is looking at a situation. If I'm reading the game one Southern Miss performance correctly, and it's kind of hard to miss not having seen one play, but just looking at the box score that we're looking at a team uh, in Southern Miss that uh, was, it, it's been a pretty bad football program here for the last several seasons. And, yeah. and I th always think of Southern Miss as being a really good football program because it was in the eighties and nineties, but uh, they've been down for quite a while. I think three and nine was the record last year, I believe. Yeah. But Frank Gore Jr. is the running back, uh, 178 yards, 5.6 per carry on 32 carries, couple touchdowns. The rushing attack as a whole ran the football 54 times. They only threw it 13 in a 29-27 four overtime game against Liberty. Um, so they are running team, put it up 13 times in a four overtime game. Now, overtime's not being what they were, of course, uh, before where you had to play a complete drive from the 25 yard line, but still five of 13 through the air. So the defensive backs, at least from a pass standpoint, may get the week off. Yeah. And the other part of that, of the 14 passes that were thrown, Five of them were thrown by running backs, one by Antavius Willis and four okay. by the yes. aforementioned Frank Gore Jr. Right. So there's a lot of single wing. Sorry, my nose is running. Sorry, but there's a lot of single wing. There's a lot of, yeah. uh, you know, high school kind of give the ball to the best guy as quarter, like have him touch the ball first on the play and go from there kind of a thing. And so, yeah, it's going to be incumbent upon Miami's front seven to really be disciplined against the rush because that's what they're going to do clearly by demonstrated performance in game one. Um, but then the defensive backs can't take time off either. You know, like they, you know, Bethune Cookman wasn't really great, you know, or anything, but they threw the ball with a little bit of success and they threw a wrinkle in there. You know, they run mesh, you know, the crossing routes across the middle, you know, you wait, somebody gets picked and you throw them. And, you know, that was the two, two at well touchdown play uh, when they played here. If you remember that crossers, you hit them and they're, and there's always, you know, like a, a release valve, you know, check down the running back, you know, flat. But there's the well-known wrinkle that you go mesh wheel and that running back, instead of going to the flat, you take it to the flat and you turn it up. And Keontre Smith went to the flat. He was looking for that ball. He was like, Gilbert ain't the only one who's going to pick six. I'm about to take this to the crib. Like, yo, we're about to celebrate down there in the corner of the, uh, south, you know, the East end zone again, right in front of, you know, uh, MIAO's uh, field club seats. We're about to be over there, but that running back did what that wheel. And you see Keatra, he comes up and he's literally like, Oh, shoot. Darn it. Because you can still get one wrinkle. And it was funny at that very time I was debating with somebody in the press box about Bethune not scoring a touchdown during the game. So they're man, yeah. And then they hit it. He goes, and I'm like, so they had a per like literally a perfect play call against the perfect defense to make them score. And that actually came true. And if you're banking on that, hey, fine, you know, go, you know, stand out in the ocean and wait to get hit by a lightning, you know, go play the the money ball or whatever to, to win billions of dollars. But fine. But I say that to say that on any given play. If you're not dialed in and you just think, oh, this is an inferior team and I've seen them run this and I've seen them run this and I've seen them run this and you think that there is no wrinkle or counter or uh, secondary option, you already saw it last week. What happened? Bethune goes, you know, hits you over the top uh, with a wheel route for a touchdown. So, you know, yeah, everybody really needs to be in there. But, yeah, it's going to really start with the run defense, uh, you know, and just that front four really dominating up front and making life tough for – Whoever is in the backfield, quarterback, running back, whatever, you know, that, but that's really where it's going to start from. And then, you know, this is a thing where I've been talking about for years that Miami needs to do what Miami needs to do and be concerned about that and nothing else. Because if you play to the standard level, it should matter not who's on the other side. And this is a game just like last week where we are implementing what is the standard level of performance that we need to hit as the Miami Hurricanes. And then if we do that on offense, defense, special teams, all the way around, we'll be successful. So, yeah, remove the concern for the other team. I mean, obviously, you know, respect all opponents, but fear none. You know, but do what we need to do in the context of the game, we'll be all right. 
Because just to finish the point about the run-pass ratio for this team, yeah, 13 pass attempts, ran in 54, 13 pass attempts. They completed five, and they threw three to the other guys. (laughs) That's not real effective. I mean, but that's a four to one uh, run to pass, you know, sure. uh, ratio on offense. So, because uh, 52 is 13 times three. 30, yeah. So just yeah. over four to one, yep. you know. So out of every five snaps, they're going to run the ball four times or attempt to, you know. And I think maybe they'll early on try to dial up something a little bit different to try to say, okay, well, you know, we don't want to get blown out and we want to, you know, try to try something and, you know, hit a haymaker, you know, I'm coming in against, you know, Mike Tyson, I'm throwing haymaker, I'm throwing uppercuts because I'm trying, you know, look, because Mike Tyson going to probably hit me and and knock me out, but I'm going to try just to hit, go for broke, you know, swing for the hills from my, you know, and and try to try to get one. And they're probably going to try something like that. But again, if Miami studies the film, if Miami pays attention to the coaching and does what they need to do, we should be all right. They do that or they play close to the vest and try to get you into a game where, like you're saying, if, if your defensive front, Miami's defensive front doesn't dominate and USM's able to string together some plays and run their offense and get, you know, three, then six, then four, then seven. Then you get into a game where, you know, before you'd know it, your offense has only had the ball maybe for a second time and you're like eight minutes deep into the second quarter and they, right. it's a six to three game. And, you know, they just kind of try to suppress the whole action. Now, in no way do I think Miami gets challenged in this game, but it could be one of those lazy first halves if they're able to play their game to perfection. Right. I mean, I hope not. I hope that we come out, you know, again and, you know, do what we need to do. And, you know, I would even – be amenable to opening up the pass game off the top, you know, a little bit more uh, than we saw this past week. And I get, you know, like it was pretty much a preseason scrimmage and everything. And, you know, absent the quarterback running around um, because the, you know, running with their legs and then running around and then just finding somebody open because you, you can't play coverage for five and six seconds. That was really, you know, damaging in terms of being able to move up the field. I mean, we were never going to lose the platoon, but you know what I mean? So, yeah. 